Hello everyone. Today we're going to play a game of Alien Legendary with one of the expansion scenarios, which is Aliens of All. I'm not really I'm not going to really explain how to play or anything. But uh what I'll tell you right off the bat is that in some ways I'm playing it slightly easier because I'm adding drones to all three stages of the of the deck for the hive there even though I'm playing solo and I'm playing with a variant so that you can coordinate with yourself once per turn and essentially get a freebie card rather than simply discard it you use it as well so that makes it easier but I'm also adding a soldier which is a, a harder variant to each of the three stages a soldier level one soldier level two and soldier level three if that doesn't make sense to you and you want it to make sense check out a rules video somewhere but this game I'm just gonna jump right into playing mostly mostly come at nine but uh we're playing with all of the alien three character cards what I like to imagine because um the new scenarios don't actually have new character cards they're called character cards but rather than thinking of each of those as an individual character they're more like a character's activity or event like they're more named after a specific thing so i like to think of them as actions that a type of character can take one thing that's wonderful about this game is i think it turns the bad movies like alien 3 into what it should have been other than great movies like aliens the second one it kind of gives a pretty faithful version of it not completely faithful though because there's simply more overall aliens you're fighting in these games it, it, it's more of a combat game it's more action it's more like all of the alien movies are turned into the more actioner shooting of aliens the second one if that makes sense but that's perfect for a game and it's just a reimagining so it doesn't feel unfaithful it feels like in a way how it should have been or how it could have been in some weird, weird ways, almost playing the Alien 3 scenario before has almost made it more emotionally poignant than simply the movie, which was deeply flawed. David Fincher said it was his uh, worst movie. I think he's right. I'll be playing as the medic. So I have this avatar showing my health, my armor, which won't come into play in this game. Is this focusing? I can't tell. Let's see. Yeah, there we go. So I start the game with a Battlefield Medicine, which is a roll card, which means it's shuffled into my deck. Hey, sweetie pie. No, no, no. This is this is game time. One of my two sweet kitties. No, no walking on table, okay? Or no walking on the game mat, I should say. So I'm going to put my roll card. No. It's the biggest alien of all. Hey, buddy. Buddy, honey, come on. I'm sorry, but it's not it's not snuggle time. So I have my starting cards here with seven specials. They recruit. They're the get uh, you know purchasing resource and uh, five grunts, which are the fighting resource for fighting off the guys that come. Alien legendary. Oh, many people say, and I think they're right, is the best in the all of the legendary games, including encounters or any of the other ones oh man this is not working out sweetheart you gotta over here honey. no don't act like i'm killing you man i'm just moving you okay so unlike many deck building games you have a hand of six cards rather than five okay so I've got my, can I lean on this without it shaking everything? Not quite. Dude, come on. I'm so sorry about this. So uh, one thing that's, it's kind of like we get a rehash of what's on available on the table. All right, we're back into it. So this is the sergeant deck. So the sergeants are all cards that you can coordinate. They all give you recruiting resource. So coordinate as we're playing it basically gives one 
free card I can play per turn. You'll see what I mean. I have my hand of six cards, which is just grunts giving the claws the fighting power, and uh, stars giving the recruiting power with specialists. That's these guys here. The deck is here, you can't quite see. And um, it's not so important to see over this way, but you can see discarded, uh, discarded strikes, dead enemies, um, discarded hatchery. Oh, no, no, the hatchery as well. So that'll, that'll come out. And uh, dead characters, so the dead of these cards, whenever they do die or I'm made to trash them from my hand or anything like that. The complex is interesting because cards move through it in the hive phase. That's the beginning of each turn, basically, the bad guy turn. And the cards will come out this way and slide along, you'll see. But uh, this is the first event, or the first objective. And there are three objectives. I have to solve all three to win the game. And they m should essentially correspond to the first, second, and third uh of uh, sections of, it's in three parts of that hive deck up there that'll slide its way out so the first uh, section here is first objective incubators and again we're in aliens evolved subdue and interrogate three station guards okay that sounds pretty good once they've all been interrogated, complete the objective. And it has an event thing there. So event cards do different uh, different things depending on what current objective you're on. As for the location, we're at the science station, science station um, Echiona. Echiona. Uh, Echiona. Yeah, Echiona, I, I want to say. Research station focused on cloning and bioengineering. And just like with uh, events doing different things depending on what third you're in, the hazards will do different things depending on what, uh, on what, on not the objective, but if it's the first hazard, the second hazard, or the third hazard. So we can expect it to be increasingly, increasingly negative. I'm not even going to read through it right now. These are the Jeez, man, what you, oh, 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 so sorry. It's this alien here. It's my first one of Alien Legendary. I haven't done a game playthrough in a while, so feel free to tell me in the comments how terrible of a job I'm doing. No problem, but hopefully this is either fun or interesting or relaxing or annoying or just something, as long as it's something, as long as we feel alive, right? All right, let's get out the hatchery cards. <laughs> One kind of interesting thing about the hatchery cards being uh, there is, in a sense, you can almost leave them in the box because they're never cards that you have to draw. You, there are always ones you specifically pick out what you need, but it's no problem having them there. It's almost a shame covering up the nice art in this game with, with the cards, but that's fine. You still see it. But like with, uh, you know, the sergeant deck here, I guess you, you see that on the cards itself, but... Um, I will say, and people tell me if they disagree, I actually, I don't like this style of art. It works okay for this, and, and some of it's actually really good, and I like it a lot. But this kind of 70s comic book style, uh, I'm in the minority, I know, but I would prefer just movie stills, I think. The, the movies, even the bad ones, photographically were beautiful. If you, for still shots. But I, I don't mind this, I'm just, I'm rambling. Yeah, let's get to the game. All right, so... So we're, okay, incubators, so we're keeping a watch on things. We gotta interrogate, we know something went wrong. Uh, we gotta interrogate what's going wrong. And again, I'm the medic, but I'm a battlefield medic, so I'm stuck on this uh, ship here, this this uh, science station, Echiona, and I'm like, all right, some stuff's going down. And the kind of, the prison type people almost kind of work, as you can imagine, they're kind of, you know, perhaps facility workers or people stuck there in the crossfire. So first high phase, top card comes down into the ventilation shaft. And then these will slide along, they'll push each other. As one comes out, the next one will push it, which means that if you clear out a spot, it can slow down the pushing because they won't have anything to push. Someone had pointed out before, it's almost like the aliens are being polite. Like, excuse me, move out of the way, which sounds silly, but it works mechanically for the game. 
So those are each of the locations. It'll slide down this way, and then it'll come down into the combat zone. Once they're there, every single turn that it's still there, there they will attack me. I said I wouldn't go over the rules, but I'm still explaining too much. Now, unlike in other legendary games, and indeed many deck building games, enemies that are coming out this way, I don't see what they are until they reach the combat station when they flip over, unless I scan the room. <laughs> Scanning noise, you know? And I go, okay. If I scan the room, I can find out what's there. As it gets closer, it gets easier to scan. It costs less and less claws, attack value. But I have less time to deal with it because you can't fight something until you scan it. Or it's in the combat zone and it's automatically scanned because it's right in front of you. So I say, okay. But first, the aliens are coming out. Let's see. First thing I want to do is figure out what I can buy. So I have... My, you pretty much want to spend everything you get every turn. So I have three specialists for three coins worth of buying and three grunts. The three grunts won't really help me because the only th I, thing I could use with fighting power is scanning that room, but that costs four. No problem. So let's see what costs three. Sergeants always cost three, so I could buy a sergeant. In fact, that's actually what I'm going to do right off the bat. The sergeants are all the same. They all cost three, and they give you two recruiting power, but they have different um, crew and class symbols, which means that they can feed into different combinations. But besides from that, they're basically the same. Look into my eye. So I put this in my discard pile. When it gets reshuffled in, I'll be able to play it. So we did the high phase by moving that uh, alien or whatever it is there. We did our action phase by playing our cards. We couldn't use our attack, but we recruited the sergeant. So we discard the rest. Then we do strike phase, meaning anything in the combat zone would now attack us. But there's nothing there, of course. So we move up to cleanup phase. We discard our hands, whether we hand whether we played it or not. We did that. And now we draw six new cards. Three, four, five, six. All right, and it's already round two. So immediately, we go to the high phase. This guy slides out here. And I know with Solo, with how I'm doing it, it's easier. But I'm not as clever as a lot of people who play this game, at least with the portions of your brain that are good at this sort of thing. So I need all the help I can get to survive. All right. In my hand, I have two grunts for two attack. And I have three recruiting power and my battlefield medic card. All right, just by playing it, it lets me draw a card and heal a strike from any player. There's no strikes. Strikes are wounds, basically, that you have on you. I haven't been wounded or nothing struck me yet. So I'm playing that and drawing the last card of the deck there. So it'll be reshuffled, of course. Another specialist. So still, I have two attack power. Not, not enough to scan that three room for scanning. But with uh, whoops, four specialists, I'm going to go ahead and use them to recruit. Now, nothing down here costs four. I can just get a three and have a leftover. But let's see about this guy. Rumor control, activate, which means that uh, with activate, it's kind of nice. You can kind of leave it in front of you and then use it when you want. Yeah, once this turn. The reason that's different than immediately is because 
every card you play is played in order. You do one card after another and you resolve them in order. This might sound uh, backward because of the fact that it seems like you just get a bunch of resources and then spin them. So you can spend resources in any order you want because playing cards that give you resource just add to your pool. It's almost like a mana pool in Magic. So it adds to your total pool, but you can spin that pool anytime you want. But the actual effects of cards, including symbols on them, and stuff down here, that matters, the turn order. So this is just saying anytime during your turn that you want, reveal the top card of your deck and draw it. If it costs zero, draw another card. So this one's more good if you have a lot of uh, low, like, uh, I suppose early on when you have low cost cards, like starter cards. So I'm going to get this. That cost me two of my four recruiting. And correct me if I'm wrong, but I think immediately a new one becomes draftable out here. Hmm, Bait for the Beast is the new one. So I still have two recruiting power left. Company's orders. Hmm, it's a nice coordinatable one. We're playing with that with two recruiting power. So it's a double specialist. So I'm going to get that as well. I'm going to shuffle my discard pile because my deck is out. We do our strike phase. It's nothing to our cleanup phase. We're shuffling and we're going to get a new hand of six cards. One, two, three, four, five, six. Coco Claw. Um, we'll look at them real quick here. All right, we got three attack power with our grunts, two specialists, and a coordinate card so we can discard that and draw another. The company's orders. What well, we just rec recruited this card this turn. We just bought this card, I should say, more simply. All right, next round, high phase. They're getting closer to the combat zone. Okay, I need to start scanning rooms soon. So that is what I'll do. First, I'm going to play this coordinate card because I can, so that'd be useful. So this adds two recruiting power to my pool. I draw a new card. It's another specialist. All right, so I play the other three. That brings me up to five total purchasing power. And then my grunts go down. Three fighting, three claws. I'll just call them... Uh, Three attack. Attack. All right, so we got four recruit, four dollars, three attack, four money, three attack, monies. Uh, five money, forgive me. Yeah. So. Bait for the beast. Sacrifice this card. Get plus two attack. Well, and two attack base, so if you actually kill this card, trash it to the dead character's pile. It would give you two more. This could be useful later on. And a two attack card is not bad right off the bat. I'll recruit that, which means there's a remainder of one. Nothing I can buy with one. All right. Now, with my three, uh, my three attack, my three claws, we scan this room, because it only takes three to scan. Scrabbling, face hugger, reveal. Put this in front of you. Any player can fight it on their turn. If it is still alive at the end of the next player's turn, kill it and gain a chest buster from the hatchery. Oh, that sucks. So I have to make sure I kill this by the end of my next turn or else I'm going to get a chest burster and potentially die in this game real fast by turning into an alien. And I'm just keeping them down here, but again, here's my my avatar with my health and uh, this on me. This doesn't wound me, but it just means that I'm wrestling now with this chest burster, essentially. This uh, face hugger. All right, discarding my hand. All 
One, two, three, four, five, six. Drew six more. Next round, high phase. Okay. All right, we've got... Ooh, it's Sergeant for two chord. Uh, I'm going to... All right, so I have a lot of coordinating power. Oh, but only... Hey, all right. We lucked out. We've got two attack. So I'm going to spin that and kill this scrabbling face hugger that was trying to latch on to me. Good. All right, it's dead. We put it over here in dead enemies. Then with my remaining, I'm gonna get the two recruiting power from this sergeant and play him with a coordinate. I know that's easy mode to do it that way instead of just discarding it to draw another, but that's what we're doing. We are playing with soldiers again after all. So that's and another specialist. So that's two plus one, two, three, four, five, six. And we'll play this, see if its effect works. Reveal the top card of the card, and if it costs zero, draw it. Rumor control. Hey, nice, it costs zero. Battlefield medic, I like this card. Uh, it doesn't help me too much here, though, but oh, in turn, it lets me draw, discard it, and draw another already. And it's a specialist again. So I had the name. So seven total credits to buy. Well, it's not every round this early. You have seven credits. So let's look at this expensive one more closely. We better rethink this thing. Okay, so that seems pretty good. Gives three three attack power and uh, activate each enemy in the combat zone. Gets minus two attack the next time you fight this turn. So the stuff you're actually fighting will become weaker this turn if it's in the combat zone. If it's up and close, it becomes tough or makes sense. And activate, if you played that crew symbol this turn, the second one there. Yeah, then uh, each time you kill an enemy in the combat zone this turn, you can heal a strike from any player. So this one definitely benefits from lots of comboing. But, if nothing else, it still does three damage. So that's a nice card. So I burned through my deck already, and just like with all deck building games, the earlier you are in the game, the faster you burn through your deck and reshuffle. Six. We have a new hand of six cards. We refresh this guy for sale. Who's here? Whatever it takes. It's coordinate that can do two recruit and two attack. Only the star is coordinatable, I think, though. So, right? Or is that? No, that's not how that works. The card is coordinatable. So that's just a really powerful card two attack and two credits. All right, I have a new hand. The hive moves, hive phase. Here we are. Oops, what am I doing? It's so uh, usual in games to just start flipping cards over when you kind of drag them out. It's so counterintuitive in this game, for me at least, to no, keep them, you know, keep them face down okay so with my hand I've got three grunts and three specialists three attack three credits pretty evenly distributed exactly evenly distributed so let's see what we got no villain this is uh, stay in that spot okay buddy alright um I like this part of the family one, and it's one of the cool iconic moments of uh, 
Alien 3. Avoid the next strike you would draw this turn. Hmm, that's good if you're expecting it to come. Guys, folks in the combat zone. And does two attack. I like that. Let's get that. So we purchased that. New card comes out. Stop this raving alien right there. No villain. And then we have three attack power. All right, let's scan this two room. I know we could scan the three room, but for some reason I want to see what this is. Oh, dang it. It's another one of these uh, scrambling face huggers coming at me. And again, with our objective, I'm moving more slow. It's the beginning of the game and I ramble too much. I know, but uh, we're still looking for the three station guards. Okay. So I've got this face hugger in front of me. All right. So that's all we can do this turn. All right, we're drawing up six cards. Next round, high phase. And it's starting to get filled up there. All right. We've got ourselves with four credits from specialists, then two more from a sergeant, and one attack from a grunt. We're going to play the coordinate on the sergeant, get an additional card. It's my battlefield medic one again, so I can draw another card. All oh, right, we got this cool one here. So let's play these out in order. Both of its activating powers for this, we better rethink this, would only help if the baddie was in the combat zone, which it's not, so the order won't matter this time. But our total stats are four killing power and three, six, Dollars. So, of course, I'm going to kill this guy for two of the uh, the claws for two combat. And that means I've got two more. So let's scan this room. Uh-oh. We've got our first uh, hazard. So, the hazard, hazard one, groggy. Each other player discards two random cards from their hand. Well... There is no other player, it's solo. So you know what I'm gonna do? Um, I'm gonna, I don't know how to interpret, hey, interpret that without making it too easy. I'm gonna draw two cards less on my next turn because I would be the next player. Okay, cool. That stinks though, I was on all groggy. Ugh, what's going on? But, that hazard goes away, it gets discarded. My cat is in the dead enemies pile, which is appropriate. Okay. <sighs> Villain buddy. All right, so. We used up our combat, but we still have our six. Hmm. I wanna buy another one of these, whatever it takes. Maybe it's a bad strategy, but I find that focusing up with more of the same card in this game seems to work well for me. Some of that could be coincidence and dumb luck, of course. A little re-education. Yeah, sometimes we all need a little re-education. Life is about learning. I've always said that. All right, let's, let's draw up our hands. One, two, three, four decks out, we'll reshuffle. Life is about learning, it's about balance, it's about forgiveness, but also conviction. Alright, let's look at our hand here. 
Oh, we're not drawing two more. I lied. We're sticking with our four because that grogginess. So we've got our four high faves. All right. We've got the company's orders, which we can coordinate. So we're going to do that. Coordinate it. We got the $2 from it. And we got a specialist. Oh, the previous card that company's orders had that crew symbol. So we can activate this to look at the top card of the deck specialist. And we get it. So that worked out well. Actually, I think I used that ability once before and I didn't check if I had the crew. I kind of forgot about the comboing thing. Stupid moment. I have many of those in my life. But we have two credits plus one, three, four, five. All right, we have five total dollars and th three total attack. So we need to start building up more attack soon, I think. Or do we need more? No, we need a little bit more dollars, maybe. I want to stop this raving to desperation. Activate. If you haven't recruited any characters this turn and every character in HE costs four or more, you get plus two. That is a weird ability, but it's still two credits at least. So it's a desperation y thing. Okay, I'm going to rec recruit that. We ought to panic. And then with my three attack power, I'm gonna scan this room this time. Hey, all right, it's station guards. Hey, what's up, station guards? How you doing? I can't read it through the camera so well. Stationary range, death. Instead of killing, this is subdue it. We have to subdue three to, uh, you know, figure out what's going on. Operations. So it, when I subdue it, it goes to operations instead of combat zone. Pay a credit, uh, pay an attack to interrogate the guard. Kill it. How'd you get free? Doesn't matter. You're dead anyway. Dr. Typhon will send the dogs. They'll tear you apart. Well, so do I just have to subdue or do I... Um, have to also... Now I've got to interrogate him. Yeah, so I've got to interrogate Okay. Discard our hand. And we draw six more for cleanup. phase <laughs> so I guess these station guards are bad and working for the baddie because I interrogate them I guess with torture well maybe not with torture maybe I'm kind about it but I do attack them first so that's something all right this time around I've gotten three credits from specialists. I've got three attack with grunts and my battlefield medic to draw a new card in its place because no strikes left. All right, that gives me a new specialist. So $4, three attack. Well, I'm going to subdue this guy with three attack. <laughs> you come with me. You're going to operations. You're subdued. And with my four credits, well, let's just say that uh, if we're going to be interrogating these guys, 
it's going to be a little bit of re-education. Is that offensive that I'm saying it like that? I don't. I really don't mean to be. All right, gives you two attack, and you may kill any of your characters. I guess once characters get a little weaker compared to what you want more of, it's good to start trashing them. Makes sense. That's what we'll do. Also, another little complaint is it, it would be nice if there was more total art. Like, I get that there's a whole deck of sergeant cards, but they're all the same art, which I guess is fine. I mean, art's not cheap if you have tons of cards, but still. No, I'm just being negative. This game is incredibly fun to play. I'm not perhaps doing it justice here, but hopefully this is at least interesting to watch one idiot play uh, his version of how he likes to play with some drones, but also soldiers and all that. It's your toy. You can play with it as you like. Yeah. And it still does flex my brain a little, even if it would be easy for other people. All right, we've got ourselves a cool hand of cards here. We've got a sergeant, so let's play, play him with coordinate, so I can draw a new, a new card. That gives me two to spend right off the bat. Got our battlefield medic. Draw a new one here. Got another special. So we let's add up our total do, uh, resources here. Sorry, this shouldn't take me this long, but we got a lot of cool stuff. We've got ourselves with uh, one, two, three, four, five credits to spend. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven attack. So seven attack and five. Um, no, uh, six dollars because we had the sergeant. Seven attack, six credits. All right. I'm gonna try to speed that up next time. Seven attack, six credits. So, I want to interrogate this guy for one. <laughs> Interrogation noise. Killed it. That's one down. But we've still got to finish the other guys who come out. So we have still six, six uh, attack left. Let's scan this for two. Man, it's one more of these jerks. I guess there's a few towards the beginning. All right, so we scan. We had six more. We scan more. Brought us down to four. Killing this brings it down to two, uh, two left. Well, darn. We can't do anything more with two left, but that's okay. We interrogated that guy, we killed off that face hugger. All right, now we have six credits to spend. Nope, we're going. All right, we have six credits to spend. Let's get another re-education and let's get, now let's get medical attention. It, uh, you may heal the strike from a player if you act if you have that combo and it gives two to there no never mind we'll get that next time well, we're gonna get part of the family again and another uh, re-education yep 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 that's what we're gonna do all right so that was a long turn here but we did it 
All right, I got my new hands of six. Let's do high phase. They're getting closer. Okay, so far no damage on us. We're doing well this game. Maybe we'll go damage free this whole game. Maybe not. Once they start overwhelming you in this game, it's uh, it can be really tough to get out of it. All right, first we're playing Bait for the Beast. That gives us a W symbol. Adds two to our total attack. Then three grunts for three, four, five attack. Then these two guys, including Rumor Control, for two recruit, and this symbol's activated for another card potentially. And we've got it. So. We got five attack, three credits. All right, now with the three credits, we're gonna buy. We ought to panic, activate. For the rest of the turn, you can't draw more than one strike. Nice, that's good if I start getting overwhelmed. So, that costs three of my Five darn, I was hoping for a two. I didn't necessarily plan that out too well. I'll start doing that better, but we uh, we got we got a new card there. We have five attack. Let's scan. It's a xenomorph. It's immense. Alright, so that costs us two. We have three left ongoing. This gives plus clause equals the objective you're on. So if object three plus three. Well, we're on objective one, so it's plus one. So three total, and that's what we have left. So we killed this immense, immense xenomorph. Nice, not bad. All right, let's clean up. Okay, and high phase. Yeah, so far we're keeping them in check. All right, we don't qualify to use the special abilities this turn, including re-education, but we have two attack and seven credits. Let's use our credits smarter this time. A four and a three makes sense, but let's see what we need. A little more recruiting power and wound healing might not be so bad. So we'll get this for four medical attention and see what comes out. So four, we have three left. And one more chance. Gives two attack and we can sacrifice it. It's the only card you play this turn. Discard your hand and draw five more. Interesting. So if you play that first, you might get some better cards. That you have like a mulligan. Ultimate sacrifice. Heavy. So that's six. We have our two attack. Let's scan this one. It's our uh, additional station guards here. All right. Cleanup phase. It's garden hand getting a new hand. are coming closer. They want to attack us too, of course. They're working for the corrupt doctor who did all these crazy enhanced experiments around here. Well, no time like the future to take these guys out. Alright, we got our hand of cards. First I'll play Battlefield Doctor. Draw a new card. Ah, Bait for the Beast. Two attack power plus grunts brings it up to three, four, four attack, and three credits with specialists. All right, so with the four attack, I'm gonna subdue these guys. Boom! And then with the leftover one, kill them with an interrogation. Excellent. 
that much closer. And we have three credits to recruit. Let's draw another sergeant card. What the heck, you know? There's no shame in getting a sergeant. Draw our hand of six. High phase. Yeah, they're really getting it to me now. We're almost done with our first uh, third. And then it starts to speed up because I kind of get into a groove and I know what I'm doing. I haven't played this in a while. And I'm just not that game smart. I'm hopefully smart with some things. Isn't that a thing dumb people say, though? I'm not smart in this way. I'm smart in a different way. And really you're thinking, no, you're just... You're just dumb. I might just be dumb. There's no shame in that. It's not my fault, if that's the case. Or maybe I'm not dumb, and there, there is truth to that. Who knows? Who knows? All right, well, what do we got here? We better rethink this one. Coordinate with Sergeant. There's some juicy young colonist starters who we need to rescue from their virginity. That is offensive, actually. Probably. If it is offensive, I denounce it. If it's not offensive, I take credit for it. Okay, so... Three attack, two recruit, sergeant coordinate, draw a new card. Grunt, four attack... Now we're getting stronger. Our grand total is four recruit and 11 attack. Well, let's start with what's in front of us. Scan for two, brings it down to nine. Uh, we have our final stupid guards. All right, stupid guards. Then with uh, eight, seven, six, <laughs> subdued them. Then bring down to five, interrogated and killed. That completes objective one. <laughs> and we still have four attack left. All right. Release the hounds. Like Mr. Burns. So a new offense. Objective. Get through the hatch. All right, we got to find this hatch and get through it. If the hatch is attached to a complex, move it one space to the left. It's not in pl uh, if it's not in play, or it was attached to the airlock when the event was revealed, you and the next player each draw a strike. So it's not, yeah, if it's not in play, or it was attached to an airlock when the event... Well, shucks. We draw a strike, but... Fortunately, part of what we got our claws from, our attack from the turn. So we want to push it past the ventilation shaft by paying its its cost in credits and we still have t uh, four four left so we scan in attack we have four so we scan this one up oh, we have a hazard is that the third hazard or the second i think it's the second double check Yeah, that's the second hazard. So, on our science station, the second hazard is something's coming. Add hive cards until the complex is full, then add one more. Oh man, that's rough. Okay, something's coming. That means that these all get pushed down. That ventilation shaft is still attached, meaning that it, uh, you know, doesn't take up the space, but it's there, essentially, showing that we're going through the maze. We're looking for it. We're going through the, to, you know, the access hatch. 
All right, so that's pretty rough. And this guy being in the combat zone, he gets revealed. Ooh, it's an enhanced Xenomorph. All right, so that's a new thing that we have. Enhanced means that we draw one of our character cards, uh, one of our good guy cards, and depending on the crew symbol it shows, or the class symbol, it'll have a different special ability. So, let's draw it. Oop, it's got these. So, what that means is that when you fight this enemy, first draw a strike. Okay, so it's an enhanced xenomorph that when we first fight it, we have to draw a strike. All right, that is pretty rough. So all of that happens here when I was using my, uh, just using the rest of my attack. I have no resources left. All right, that means I got to take it. It's now the strike phase. And this guy, um, so I'm not fighting him, but I'm in the strike phase. So I draw a strike anyway, of course. First time to this game. Ooh, brutal puncture. <laughs> All right, now, so this is where the art is a little bit uh, flourishy, a little flamboyant, because that, like, three damage is a lot of damage. My guy only has ten life, but that art is not the kind of thing you can heal up with some rations and a med kit and a nice nap. That is, that is, uh gonna ruin your whole weekend that that situation that's okay it's all part of the fun and now we do clean up we drew our new hand of six cards next high phase everything moves down some more uh oh buying time might be a good thing now okay this one is, uh, ooh, clone per 659 Perseus. Reveal. If Perseus is in the complex, choose a player to gain him. Otherwise, kill him. Darn. Draw, uh, draw a card. Gain. Yeah, draw a card. Oh, man. Okay, so I don't get to use him at all. He just, I saw him there, and I didn't get to him in time. And this clone, this poor guy, is just dead. Even though he could have triggered all this cool stuff. Shucks. Poor, poor Perseus. So murdered by evil. All right, so I have five credits to spend. And... I can coordinate once with the company's orders. So, gives us an additional two to spend. So, seven dollars to spend. So, let's spend uh, dollars to, uh, let's spend three of that seven to push this over one. And then we'll spend the remaining, we have four, we've spent the remaining three of that with one remainder to push it again. Because that's our main objective here. Now, we're not able to activate um, any real special abilities, but we played Eulogy, which means we can trigger it's his IQ so that we don't have to discard any cards. Four, five, six. Six attack power. That is enough to kill this enhanced jerk. With two remaining. Xenomorph Tracker. Looks pretty nasty. Ongoing. This alien can't be killed unless you play a roll call. We, we are in luck because we drew our Battlefield Medic card. This is awesome. 
because I get to draw a card. I can heal that nasty wound I have on me. So this strike goes away and even matches the picture on the playmat. That's fun. And uh, it makes it so that I can kill this jerk who requires a roll card because that's what it is. And I even draw another card. So that's the kind of comboing that we need. All right, very cool. Now let's do, we don't have any coordinates this round. That's okay. We only have one recruiting power, but it's this guy. Reveal the top card of the deck, and if it's zero, play it for free. It's a grunt, so that's zero, so we do get to play it. We have some heavy hitting here. I don't want to do the HQ rearranging that this one, this one thing would let me do. Yeah, I don't even qualify. I don't have enough of that class symbol. But I've got 11 attack power, so we can kill this guy. He's dead. Down to nine. Scan down to seven. This guy looks pretty nasty. Enhanced Xenomorph. Again. Let's see what he's enhanced with. Same thing, when you fight this enemy, first draw a strike. Same thing as one of the the earlier ones. Well, that brought us down to seven before. Let's fight him. That costs four to kill him. Giving us three left, but first we have to draw a strike. It's a deep gash. So we're down to eight life. So it takes four of our seven to kill this guy too. <laughs> mowing these guys down. And we still have three attack left. Let's scan this room. Oh man, it's another Xenomorph tracker. I Meaning he's got that rough thing that can't kill him unless I play my roll card. But it'll be a while till I get to my roll card, so this guy might be trying to smash at me for a while. Shucks. Okay, high phase. Even with some advantages that I'm playing with, it's still not easy, at least for me. This is a notoriously difficult game, in some ways too difficult, especially if you play in the one versus all mode with a queen alien player. Okay, so what we have is Five credits. I say we go ahead and we move this ventilation shaft, the access point rather. We're getting closer to finding it. We're scanning for it. Thematically, it makes sense. It takes four. We have one left, but that's just a remainder then. Then we have three attack power. We can't kill that guy because we don't have a roll card around this time. Let's scan this one for three. That next one's going to come out anyway. Ooh, yikes. This guy's rough. It's a spitting soldier. It's one of the things that makes it harder, like I mentioned. So not only is it six to kill this one, but uh, it's ranged. That means that it'll attack me during the strike phase, even from the complex. It doesn't have to wait till it gets down to the combat zone. So it actually is rough that I scan for him. Oh, well. All right, high phase. Move this one down. What do we got? Oh, it's an event. And we're still on objective two because we're struggling with that access point. So I have to draw a strike. That's right. Ooh, close call. Whoosh. Knife work. It's all right. Bishop, what are you doing? It's not funny, man. Okay. 
So that event is going nice. These guys move over. Not so nice. But I have a sergeant. I'll play it for the coordinate. And I've got uh, three total recruiting. It's not very much, but I'll buy the company's orders for another, another coordinate one there. No, I don't want to buy the company's... Oh, yeah, no, I, uh, it's... Yeah, I only had, uh, three. That wouldn't be enough to push it. Yeah, so I'll do that. That's fine. But, uh, what I do have is pretty cool because I have lots of attack power. Ten. Uh, uh, I'm stupid. Hang on. Why is this hard for me? Because of dumbness. Yeah, ten. But I get to avoid the next strike I would draw because I'm able to trigger that part of the family ability. So that's pretty cool. So that ranged guy, he won't, wouldn't be able to get me, but I think I can kill him this time anyway. I can't kill this guy because I don't have a roll card out still. But I can kill this stupid ranged spitting soldier guy. So, he's dead. It cost me a whopping six, though. But I still have four left. So, let's use it for... Let's use it to scan way up here. Ooh. A xenomorph glider also flying. Well, sharks to that... No, not, not also, I don't know why I said also. The other guy was spitting. This guy's flying. This means he actually would fly above it. So there can be, you know, even if people get stopped up or whatever, he would just go anyway. And it also means I think I can't, I can't hit him until he comes down to the combat zone. Okay, so I can still aim for the flying guy. Just basically, he automatically pushes over even before the high phase. Nothing has to push him. He just, he just flies forward. Okay, so he scans that. I lost track of how much killing power I had. I think I used the last of it just now. High phase. First, the flying guy moves. Then the card comes out. So see, he can just fly above, even though nothing has to push him. But we have our handy-dandy friendly sergeant. We like him because he makes us draw another card. It's another another grunt. So we have three recruiting power. Darn it, still not quite enough to push that access point over. But still lots of killing power. We, we have the power of part of the family. We triggered it by having two of them. Same symbol that it has. That it needs to be tri triggered by a previous one. That's often the case, though not always, which is why doubling up on some cards can be useful. So I have a total of three, four, five, six, seven, eight combat. So first let's kill this flying guy then. Brings it down to five. Hmm, let's scan... Let's scan this. Let's scan this room here. Yep, one more enhanced xenomorph. Let's see what he's enhanced with. Oh man, he's enhanced with uh, power at the start of my turn. Discard a random card from your hand. You see that uh, the the class symbol of the random card I draw indicates the power he's enhanced with from all the genetic engineering. Well, darn. I'll have to discard a random card. Okay, so he is out there. Well, if I kill him this time around, don't even have to worry about that. Those enhanced guys so far have been a little annoying, but uh, their health hasn't gone up to levels. It's made it hard to kill. But uh, no, we already 
Wait, we kill we killed the one for um for four. We scanned one for three. Yes, we don't have enough to kill this guy, so that's okay. I for my three recruiting power, my three credits. Mm, I don't want to get more sergeants. I'm going to get one more, probably the final copy of this part of the family. That's been the most useful special ability on a card so far, besides its uh, resource power of attack or credits. Okay, got a new hand in now high phase. First flying guy move. Oh, I killed the flying guy, right. So these, th these things all move down. I have a coordinate card, two, two credits, and just got another grunt. So in fact, I have two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And by playing these in the correct order, I'm triggering uh, re-education. And I'm also triggering the, the top ability of don't upset the order. So re-education lets me kill a character, meaning I can kill one of my grunts to kind of distill down my deck, start to make it a more concentrated deck. And with don't upset the order, I can put any number of these characters on the bottom of the HQ, uh, then recruit one that costs three or less. I'm going to put these on the bottom of the HQ, which of course is this deck here. We have a second alien cat running around. He loves drinking water over there. All right. Darn, I didn't get one out in the, the HQ to, uh, that was three or less that I thought I could get. I right, so this is, but, um, or from the barracks didn't come out to the HQ, I should say. But... But with my 11 attack of power, first, I'll kill this guy. So I have seven attack left. Then I'll scan up here for three, bring it down to four attack left. Uh, it's another tracker, so I can't kill him until I play my roll card. So I have four attack left, so I'll scan this room up here. Station security, stationary, ranged. Oh man, so these jerks are not going to move down. People are just going to bump over them, but they're going to start shooting at me. Stupid security. All right, high phase. This moves down. This moves down. This one's stationary. Stays here, which means this one... Oh, why am I... I'm flipping it again. I didn't... I saw that it was some kind of alien. I mixed sense with the game. But I didn't see what it was. I just started habitually, habitually flipping it. But... I might be able to fight back a little bit this time because for starters, I'm playing... Sergeant card as a coordinate, therefore getting two more recruiting power. Gets me another specialist, brings it up to three. Now, I'll show you briefly, but trust me on this. By playing them in this order, I'm able to prevent the bad effect of this one, so no having to discard cards. This one letting me get plus two extra recruiting power 
because there's none out here that are worth uh, f um, cause every character out there costs four or more because so stop this raving and um, so it's going to add up to a lot of credits yeah 11 11 influence 11 credits 11 purchasing power so that lets me certainly oh man I, f I feel like a jerk I could have solved this a while ago I just had to move it into the ventilation shaft not past it what a jerk face I am I was wasting my time and hurting myself well that's my own fault obviously um, so let's before I even use my resources let's complete that objective now then Therefore, we've completed Release the Hounds, and we move on to the final creation. Objective, kill the final creation, and the event will be total chaos, which sounds pretty rough. So just take a look at this baddie here. That guy we can expect to come out pretty rough. Now we have 11 influence. We still can't kill these guys because we don't have roll cars out. But those ranged guys... Oh, they are, were shooting at me before. I forgot to do it. Strike phase from before. Tss, ah! They did one damage to me. Sweetie pie. I have too many cats. Two is too many, but I love them. But they get in the way. All right, but we got hurt from those guys attacking us. Uh, down to seven health now. From nine of my eleven, I'm purchasing the ultimate sacrifice. So I can't spend my remaining two influence this time. But we have eight attack power. So first, let's kill these jerks. Security guys. Brings us down to four, and they're dead. Let's scan this room. Oops. It's an event. So, the event is that the, if the final enemy is play is in play, add a secret enhancement to its stack. Otherwise, put the event card into operations until the final enemy is revealed, and then add a secret enhancement to its stack and discard the event. So, this is going to add another life point and another special ability to the final enemy. It's beefing him up. He's getting powered up with all his mutagen or whatever. Okay. So I scan that uh, room. I don't have enough to scan one more room. Okay. Hive face. All right. With the cards that I drew, I was able to use Rumor Control to get another card by activating it by playing Re-Education first to get that symbol to trigger it. Although I didn't have anything to trigger Re-Education's special ability. But in total, I've got four recruiting power and five attack. Still no roll card. Let's scan up here. Ooh, it's an augmented xenomorph. Five strength and enhanced again. Yeah, when I fight this guy, I gotta draw a strike. He's got that. So I don't have enough power to kill, to kill him. But he's there. And I got four recruiting power. Let's get medical attention. I do have two strikes on me. Eulogy. Okay, high phase. This guy moves down, this guy comes out. 
this guy here. Play coordinate with Sergeant. Get a new card and two dollars. Oh, uh, cool. And this one lets me put a hidden card on top of the hive. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. Buy some time. We gotta buy time sometimes, you know. The sergeant's green symbol lets me trigger re-education. I'm gonna kill a grunt. I got my battlefield medicine, my roll card, so that lets me heal a strike. Uh, and I'm also able to kill those guys this turn, thankfully. And I was able to trigger part of the family with the buying time so I can avoid the next strike this turn. That'll be good for that guy because he would make me draw a strike. But I have seven combat, so I'm not even going to try to aim for that guy because these guys I can only kill with that roll card out. So that takes four of my seven. I have three left. It's not enough to kill that guy. But I can scan this room. Oh, another event card to add on to our final enemy. And I'm not sure how often characters will start getting trashed slash killed, but I'll get autopsy. does three damage anyway for my five credits. All right. High phase. This comes out here. All right, we'll use company's orders coordinate to get a new card. So it's five credits plus the new card and we will buy another autopsy. Now we're able to trigger both the re-education and part of the family, preventing a strike and letting us kill another specialist. Not bad. And we have seven damage we can do. We kill this guy. Part of the family prevented the damage he did. We still have two left, but that's not enough to scan there. High phase. That's right, villain. Okay, we've got ourselves barcode. We can't activate that yet, but we can kill yet another grunt or specialist with re-education. Plus, we've got ourselves five damage we can do here. We have our battlefield medic letting us heal this flesh wound and draw another card. Gives us another credit and lets us draw the top card of our card. Oops, we don't get the recruiter for free because it's not free. We'll spend our four and get We Ought to Panic. It gives us more, uh, more attack power, preventing strikes as well. We've been good with that. And then we have, again, four attack power. Let's scan up here. That's it. We found him. It's the Xenomorph Titan, the final enemy. All right, so let's figure this out good and proper. So, seems easy enough, right? Only five life. But, uh, it's more than that. He's mega enhanced. So what that means is that he has a bunch of times we have to kill him. Okay, so... The way this works is we have to draw five random characters. Each one will have a class symbol. Some could be the same, some could be different. And just like with the other enhanced ones, we have to kill him. Uh, it'll give him that special ability. However, because there's two event cards here, we have to add two more characters underneath him, which means we have to kill him seven times in total. Otherwise, uh, he keeps coming at us. And whichever of the cards drawn is on top, that class symbol is the current special ability that he has. So right now, 
his current one, the Xenomorph Titan, excuse me, is that at the start of my turn, discard a random card from my hand. Okay, so he's here. And, uh, yeah. So, I did my cleanup phase. Now, I'll do the high phase. Everybody moves. And still more cards come out. The, the deck even reshuffles, except for events and hazards. Just the dead enemies reshuffle, if it runs out. Now, discard a random card from my hand, and... Lost the sergeant, that's okay. So I have five cards to spend. Okay, I can coordinate because of whatever it takes. Gets me a new one. I have ten total attack power. So I'm killing this this guy one off of him. So This comes off showing he's one-seventh dead. Six lives left. And uh, the next power becomes immediately active on him. And uh, the next power gives him plus three to his claw, meaning his life, therefore. Which means with my remaining five, that wouldn't be enough to kill him because... He has eight because of that enhancement right now. With my four recruiting power, I'll buy this barcode. Okay, let's do a high phase, move everybody along. Now, we'll do Sergeant for Coordinate. Also let us trigger his, it's his IQ so that we don't get the negative effect. So we draw an additional card. And... We have five recruiting. Let's buy Eulogy. We have three left. Let's see what this is. I don't want that. I'll buy a sergeant that has coordinate at least. Maybe that's not a good idea, but I don't want those ones out. Not the cheaper ones anyway. Then we have a lot of attack power. We have three plus three. Three plus three plus five. We have nine plus five. We have 14 attack power. So we're going to spend eight of that 14. Blast this guy away one more time. So that means he has six. I have six attacks left, and uh, up he has the same enhancement again on him. It's the one that gives him plus three. So my six remaining um, attack I can do won't won't take him out one more time. However, one of the things that I was able to activate is buying time. So I can put this card back on top here. So with two of the six. So perfect. We have four left. We can kill this guy. Hmm. Those stupid uh, soldier baddies, the security, are gone. All right, high phase, this one just comes down. Okay. So, uh, now we have four left. Sorry, I had to pause for a moment. I lost track of what was going on. I didn't recruit left, I have four attack left. So I'm scanning here for two more. It's an event, and it's an event in objective two. Which means, and this thing never focuses, sorry, but uh, lost in the maze. If the, yeah, if the hatch is a complex, move it to space to the left. If it's not in play, 
So what's that? Right, 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 right. Sorry, that was my bad. That's what we just were about to do automatically without an event. So this kind of fixed it, right? Right, so I draw a strike, and we prevented that. Okay, so I'm overly rehashing here. Sorry, I, I got all effed up there. All right, so it, I think it all, it all worked out to good and proper, but I still have two attack left. Can't use them. Scan there is three, and I have four recruiting power. Let's use by barcode. You may scan any room if you activate with that. Otherwise, it's the uh, just the claws only. The attack only. Alright, I got a little mixed up there. Had some cat and SD card stuff. Was dealing with it. Should be good now. High phase. Moving along. Alright. We got this comes up. Doo -doo -doo. No, Mr. Alien Cat. Well, we have five attack and five credits, and we were able to trigger that, which means new card for six credits. Six credits it is. Let's get, uh, mm, it's his IQ. What it's his IQ does is you must discard two cards from your hand to play this. Well, that's stupid. Why would I want this? Oh, if you, um, you can trigger ignore that above text. If you, so if he works with someone, you don't have to discard cards to use it. Makes sense, he is dumb, right? Francis85 Aaron, that's his IQ, got it. So, not someone with a true learning disability, but close enough. No mockery there at all on my part. And we've got three claws he would add for us. All right, so five claws, five uh, attack, six attack rather, uh, six recruit. We did three, we have three more. Eulogy, nice. Well, still, let's, let's get another sergeant with the remaining three. And with our five claws, two here, ooh, yikes. It's our first soldier we've encountered here. The Adamans make it harder. Three, and then ongoing. The first uh, two times this alien will be killed, injure it instead. The first time turn it sideways, the second time turn it upside down. Man, so you have to kill this guy twice. That's rough, all right, so I'm killing him once. <laughs> Armored, so he's now just injured. Okay, that's my turn now. All right, we drew our hands. High phase. These guys are moving along. This guy, I want to attack him again. We've got five total attack. So, uh, I'll use three to injure him once more, and a final one will do it. He has three life three times. Then I'll use my two remaining to scan this room. Ooh, it's a scrambling xenomorph complex. This can't be fought if there's a face-up enemy next to it. There is. Well, darn. All right, so this little baby one is scrambling around. And I can't fight him yet because of that guy. Okay. Then I have a... Uh, Five credits to recruit. Let's get, don't upset the order. Kind of lets me manipulate what's on offer in this tableau. And gives you three claws to attack with. And let's see what else comes out. I have two credits left. 
I'll get eulogy. I think I have enough recruiting power in my deck, really. I think. I think I should really focus on uh, attack stuff, but that's not true because I want to get really powerful stuff like Final Sacrifice. Interestingly, it doesn't have the Sacrifice ability, which is where you trash the card. That'd be kind of cool in meta if it did. Sister Ripley, coordinate. You may kill yourself. If you do, heal any number of uh, strikes from any other players, kill any number of face huggers, and kill any number of chest busters in other players. So, um, this doesn't really help solo because you can't win that way if you die, unless you died as killing the final, while completing the final objective. I guess it would work that way, but that's real chancy. Um, does it make it optional? You may kill yourself. You don't have to. Okay, you can still use it for five whopping attack, if nothing else. So that's a really good card, no matter how you slice it and dice it. But I can't afford that with just my remaining two. That's why I got the eulogy. Okay. Okay. High phase. I already drew my new hand. This guy's coming on down in the combat zone. Even though he's been injured, he's still got three life left. And uh, he can strike at me now. Got my medic card. Still no strikes yet, but it lets me draw another card. Fortunately, it gives me some more attack power here. Four total attack. That is enough to finish him off, and that is what I'm going to do. Can't really do anything with the remainder. But five credits. Oh, and I'm going to use the coordinate. Uh, no, I already used the coordinate. No, that was the meta card. That's not coordinate. I should have done that before. All right, so... That brings us another specialist. So we are up to six credits. I like both of these types of cards, the re-education and part of the family. So far, they're special abilities I haven't really been able to use yet. But they are just good all-around cards. All right, high face. The scrambly guy moves down. That means I think no one's next to him. Because these don't count as next. Maybe it does count next to him, but either way, it's not face up, so it wouldn't make it him untargetable. Actually, this is the complex, is the stuff above. That's, yeah, and if the complex is up there, this is the combat zone, right? So, either way, he would be fightable. And he's going to attack me this time if I don't kill him first. But I have. No recruiting power. However, and I can't activate most of these special abilities, but I have a total of 10 attacks, and I'm able to trigger... Uh, am I? Actually, no, I'm not, because I would need a different card to trigger that, so I can't kill one of my own characters. I can just avoid the next strike, but that won't come up. So I have 10 attack power. Two to kill this guy. You're dead. Eight left. Two to scan here. It's another event. Again, remind, remind, remind. Um, yeah, draw, draw a strike, but... I wasn't able to trigger that, but once again, this card helped me because part of the family, I avoid the next strike that I would draw this turn. So that card has helped me doubly and, and twice. Okay, so I still have, um, I spent eight to kill the guy. All right, two and two more. So I'm down, I have six left. It's been two more. Mm -mm. Reveal. Players have minus one health this turn. Well, that's pretty rough from this uh, 
nosh, noxious, noxious. It's noxious, xenomorph, noxious. I think it's noxious. It means it like makes you feel sick and everything, right? But uh, yeah, nauseous, meaning causing nausea. People often say I'm nauseous when they mean I'm nauseated, but language is changing as a result of that. Uh, in any case, I have exactly four attack left, so I kill this guy too. My battlefield medic is doing a lot of battlefielding and very little medicking. All right, we drew our, our cards, and we won't jump the gun yet. One was a sergeant, but high face. Mostly I'm scanning the cheaper rooms, but it's made the most sense to me. I have total recruiting power. First, we'll use the sergeant to get plus two and then coordinate. So two recruiting. And three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight recruiting. Eight credits. Oh, well, buying time might not be such a bad idea. You may put a hidden card on top of the, the hive. Hmm, that might be good from getting overwhelmed. So far it hasn't happened, but also three killing power. Let's get it. And uh, we have six attack. Scanning for two. Down to four. Ah, the hatch. What makes this focus on this better? Is it like that? Well, anyway, I can't read it that way. Reveal. Attach this to a room it's in. If it was revealed in the combat zone, attach it to the airlock. Complex. Pay credits equal to its room. Uh, room scan cost. Attach it to the room on its right. If it moves past the ventilation shaft, discard it and, uh, and complete the objective. I see, so what we want to keep um, pushing it by paying the scan cost of the room it's in, but in, in credits, you know, influence. So it's attached to the mid lab and we want to push it past the ventilation to readjust the camera and the battery. So the image might look a little bit different, sorry about that, but let's, we're gonna finish off our fight, uh, win or lose, with the Titan, with the giant enemy, the Thanos of aliens. Thanos is an alien, spoiler. Uh, so that doesn't make sense, but the Xenomorph Titan still has that plus three to its total defense, so high phase. Each of them moved down, including the big guy, who still has a lot of life left. All right, so I have, can avoid the next strike, I would take this turn. I have five damage to do, and that's not enough to take this guy down. Oh, forgive me, that's my discarded ones. I need to get in your hand. Okay, so fresh hand. Redrawn, we did the high phase. Now for this turn, let's see what we can do. All right, I'm in luck. I've got pretty much all damage here. I'm gonna play the company's orders to get two, two influence and then also recruit. All right, I've got a couple part of the families, which means I can avoid the next strike this turn and it adds to my total damage as well. Alright, so I have 11 total damage I can do. It takes 8 to kill the next iteration uh, of him, the next enhancement. Alright, boom. That's one more life going on this guy. And But his next enhancement is also plus 3 health, so same enhancement. Even though we're doing damage, it's coming slow. 
I'm not going to recruit anything this time. High phase. Getting closer now. Oops. Okay, for the cards we have, we're going to play our sergeant. Get the two... Credits, then get another uh, sergeant. Of course, we can only coordinate once per turn. But that gives us four to choose from. Uh, four credits worth. Let's recruit this guy after all. Ten tons of lead, that sounds like a good one. And, uh... Okay, this time I'm able to trigger, again, the one of the family to avoid next strike. But more relevantly, I'm able to scan barcode. Scan any room for free. So we'll do the most expensive one here. It's collar controls, special. Reveal, move to operations. You can pay six credits uh, to uh, disable a collar turn the card sideways. The next time an alien would strike a player, if there are any human enemies, it kills the closest one instead, then resets the controls. Hmm, interesting. I don't have any human enemies out, though. So, this won't hurt me, but I don't know if it'll help me that much either. But I do have ten damage to do, so that means we're gonna do and then eight more that gets rid of another life on him he has three left three times I've got to kill him and again he has the same enhancement that green symbol that gives him three uh, additional health makes him hard to kill Okay, high phase. Oh, we don't doesn't move down because it doesn't get pushed. Nice. All right, we have three specialists giving influence and our eulogy giving two. But I'm going to sacrifice this card. Give it a true eulogy to get an additional two, so that adds up to seven, thanks to the sacrifice of the eulogy, which gives me ten tons of lead to recruit. I additionally can do five, five damage. Not enough to take this guy down, but I can, I can scan this big one here. It's another Xenomorph Flyer, so it goes up into the air. All right, I've got four credits recruitment. Make that six, actually. And nine total damage. All right, that's enough time to do a number on him again. That's enough damage, rather. All right, we're doing good, we're doing good. He's getting close, though. His next special power is at the start of my next turn, discard a random card from my hand. We've seen that before. And high phase, this just moves automatically. This moves down. I don't really have much power to combo, but every card I drew got me Influence power, so I'm gonna re recruit almost at summon. I want it dead too. All claws from this card must be used to fight one enemy. Well, that works fine here. So I still have. Oops, that's a strike card. So I still have six more, and I'm gonna get. I want to get that thing. Now we have lots of damage. And thematically, it makes sense. We're getting more and more, uh, 
fed up, more intense, more determined. Okay, nice. So, this turn we've got Eulogy, which gives me two, plus I'm going to sacrifice it to get two more for a total of five. And, uh, what I'll buy is... First I'll buy this one, hoping to get a better one. That's available. Uh, so I can't really get what I, what I would like. But this combo here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and immune to next strike this turn because of how it's comboed out. And so that's was going to give me seven plus autopsy. If you if a card died this turn because did because of eulogy, draw a card. Oh, forgot to discard a, a hand. It's not too late. Discard a card. Okay. But the real impressive one that popped up is this new one that I recently drafted and shuffled in. It's five damage. But I only get that five damage if it's against the final enemy, which it is. So, with 11 to spend, knowing that, yep, yeah, with 11 to spend, I kill one, which means he only has one left, and I have six more to spend. All right, he has a new enhancement, Runner. What the Runner does is it makes it so that he does an extra move through the complex each turn, essentially, before the high phase, basically. Uh, but we have six combat left, and this guy takes five to kill. Boom. He's dead. We got him. We did it. Uh, that was interesting. That was weird. And... I haven't played in a while, and it's quite obvious by how slow I was going at first, started to speed up. Thanks for bearing with me, if, if you did. Even if you didn't, thank you. I haven't quite figured out how the, you know, getting the camera right and making it less fuzzy and stuff like that. And perhaps I'm boring and stuff to, or weird to listen to, because I'm a bit of a weirdo, that's okay. And hopefully maybe it was a little bit interesting or relaxing or fun or exciting or, or just something. It was for me, it's interesting for me. I think uh, future subsequent games will be faster for me. I definitely needed that refresher through playing through this time. I think I need to get better at comboing the abilities. And I suppose the Alien 3 class of characters to draw from are some of my least favorite. But I still like playing with them every now and then. They do have their own interesting flavor. And I do like that they emphasize more on sacrificing, which makes sense and is appropriate. The game played out really well. The soldiers, there's an uh, increasing difficult level of soldiers added uh, to each third of the deck. They made it a little bit harder, but um, yeah, I can tell that both by being solo and still using drones, in addition to not playing in hard mode or against an alien queen, mother, uh, or anything like that, that's, you know, it's still in easy mode. And really is the variant that I was using of making it so that the coordinate, I can basically once per turn that I have a coordinate card get a free additional draw. I'm sure that's too powerful, perhaps. If I played without that, maybe I would be dead halfway through the game. And that wouldn't be as fun for me. Sometimes I just want to play to win and just enjoy the mechanisms at play rather than play for the enjoyment of sheer challenge. But thank you so much for watching, listening in. I do appreciate it a lot, and uh, 
yeah, all, all feedback is welcome. I'm, I'm not good at this yet. <laughs>